Welcome to this bonus episode of Rock is Lit, which is basically part two in my continuing conversation with legendary musician, author, and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Jim McCarty. Jim has a truly unique and deeply personal story to share, one that touches on love, loss, and the quest for connection that transcends this world. Jim McCarty is not only a legendary drummer, known for his pivotal role in the Yardbirds, but also a man who has bravely embarked on a spiritual journey following the heartbreaking loss of his beloved wife, Lizzie. In this touching and introspective 2021 book, She Walks in Beauty, he opens the door to a world where the boundaries between this life and the next blur, seeking to reconnect with the soul of the woman he loved. But the story doesn't end there. Jim has channeled his emotions, his experiences, and the wisdom gained from this journey into his music, creating a hauntingly beautiful brand new song called Breath of the Wind, available now. This song, like his book, delves into themes of love, loss, and the ethereal, inviting us to ponder the mysteries of existence. I feel so privileged to sit down with Jim again, this time to focus on the personal and spiritual dimensions of his life. We'll unravel the threads of his love story with Lizzie, his exploration of the afterlife, and how these experiences have shaped his creative expression. If you've ever lost someone dear to you, felt the weight of grief, ached to connect with that person again and asked yourself, is there a chance, any chance at all, that I could reconnect with my loved one? You'll be touched and feel inspired by Jim's story and his music. I invite you to listen to my first interview with Jim wherever you get your podcast or watch the video version on YouTube in which we explore his upbringing and musical development and his incredible musical career, including his tenure with the Yardbirds and beyond. We also touch on Jim's interest in an exploration of the paranormal and spirituality. In this episode, we journey even more deeply into the heart and soul of a musician, an author, and a seeker of connection, Jim McCarty. Thank you so much for joining me again. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. It's lovely to be here again. Congratulations are in order. On September the 15th, the Yardbirds UK label Demon Music is releasing your new song, Breath of the Wind, which is a beautiful song. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I, it's the, the first time I've had a, uh, a solo single download. You know, yeah. it's unusual for me but it's nice very exciting so as i mentioned earlier breath of the wind was inspired by your book she walks in beauty which was written with acclaimed music journalist dave thompson now you have said this is a quote my last book nobody told me was the story of the best days of my life and a musical career that took me from a holiday camp in the english west country to the rock and roll hall of fame in cleveland this book she walks in beauty on the other hand, begins on the very worst day of my life, June 7, 2020, with the death of my wife, Elizabeth Lizzie. Now let's back up and talk about her, just in case there are people listening who haven't listened to our first interview where we go into that. Let's get a little backstory there. You two met in a channeling class in 1996. <laughs> Now that yeah, we, <laughs> everybody doesn't meet in a channeling class. <laughs> no, no, we met in a channeling class. Um, it was in an alternative community in the west of England uh, called Melbourne. Uh, the place was called Runnings Park, and it was uh, it was lovely, beautiful place. And we used to go there to um, individually, you know, to get out of London and to escape the tension and, and wind down and have a calm time. And there were all lovely people there. And then we found out, or well, they, we found out they did channeling. So we were quite interested, and that's how we met. We were on the on the course. What exactly <laughs> is channeling? Well, channeling is going into a sort of meditative state, a very calm state, and you make contact with, uh, you know, some of the um, some of the uh, guides around you. You know, the the people that are helping you in your life. That, mm -hmm. uh, what I believe, and um, everyone has them. Everyone has them around, and they're all uh, 
rooting for you and some of them are there all your life and then some come and go and but i i think most people have more than one throughout their lives and most people are oblivious to it <laughs> do you think that's one of the things that bound you together so tightly because you were a, a close couple was that yes. your, your that shared interest something that you think really kept you together as a unit I think so. It, yes, we were in that sort of uh, yeah. What 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 can you say? In in that level, we were we were on that sort of level. We, we were very a very spiritual couple, and um, we also loved traveling. And we got involved in Buddhism, and we traveled to uh, India and um, Sikkim and Ladakh and China and all these places. And went to these wonderful um, Buddhist shrines and uh, monasteries, and you know we had a we had a wonderful time together. Okay, that brings us to the really painful part. She was diagnosed with cancer in August 2018. Yeah. So she she basically had a two year battle. Did you have any indication before she got the diagnosis that that could possibly be coming? Uh, no, even, even when the diagnosis came, it, it, was, um, it, it was just a little lump in her arm, in her forearm. Uh, it's called a sarcoma. Okay. But not many people know about it, but it's a very, very aggressive cancer, which uh, spreads very, very quickly to the rest of the body. Yeah. And they, they in fact, suggested she had an arm amputated. Um, to get rid of it, uh, wow. um, but it had already spread within a couple of months, and then of course it spread everywhere. It was very, very nasty, uh, a nasty cancer to get. Yeah, and we talked before. We have this kind of shared experience where I lost my husband to cancer and my mother to cancer. So your story really touched me on many levels, and. I know that you had her at home. You have you still living in France in the home that you shared. That she was was treated and you cared for her at home and you had some nurses come in as the illness progressed to help. Were you able to talk with Lizzie about the prognosis, about what was going to happen? Oh yes, we talked all the time uh, about that, and um, we never really gave up. That was the yeah. thing. We we just said, oh, you, you know, it can still be a miracle. And um, one of the nurses sort of told her one day, oh. Oh, listen, you know, um, I have to tell you something that the doctor wouldn't tell you that, that you know, you've got no chance at all. And um, she she said, oh, oh um, yeah, she, she said that to me, but I don't have to take it on board. There's always a hope that we were going to get through it. And, and we we looked at various stories of other people. You know, there's some quite famous people that have gone through that and they've uh, it, and they, they got through it, and we always thought that might happen, but it, it never did. <laughs> right. So it was obviously her time. I've I've learned now since, and uh, it's been quite a revelation since that she should be still around. Okay, let's talk about that. When did you first notice? Oh, I, I'm sensing a, a presence, or I, maybe she's not far away. When did you begin to sense that? Well, I went. I went into uh, studying uh, near-death experiences and all that stuff on the internet, uh, and um, uh, there's a lot of great stories about people that have died and they've come back to life and tell all about what happens when they're when they're so-called dead. You know, Evan Alexander was the best one because he's a a brain surgeon, neurosurgeon, and um, he said, "Oh, my brain was dead, but I was, you know, I was alive. My consciousness was alive." So he was a good person to to talk about it, uh, and all the evidence was there. And then uh, I went into studying sort of mediumship, and uh, I did a I did a course with a, a woman called Suzanne Giesman, who's a medium in in America, and. Uh, I did the first course and I, I finished the course like it was an American time and it finished about 11 o'clock, you know, and I went in to clean my teeth before I went to bed and then the bathroom light flashed. Oh, <laughs> that the, wow. 
that was the first time and I thought this bathroom light has never flashed before <laughs> and it's never flashed since and I thought oh there's something going on and then there was various other instances uh which are all in the book of course um I, I because I learned how to contact her What did she teach you? Because I, I know that Suzanne had these, what was it, seven step, the seven step method. Tell me yes. about that. That's fascinating. Well, well it, it's called the bless me method. Uh, I don't know whether I can, uh, I can remember it all now, but the, the, each, of the, each of the letters in bless me stand for something else. And it's very simple in a way, as long as you sit quietly. And of course, uh, Elizabeth and I had that advantage. We were very close, so you know, we, we contacted contacted each other very close anyway. And while she was alive, she was she would say to me, uh, "Oh, how how are we going to contact each other? You know, when when I pass." Uh, and you know, I, I said, oh, "I've no idea." <laughs> you know, I'm dumbfounded. I had no idea. And then I realised we could do it which was an absolute revelation for me. Well, it sounds like taking that class was, it, it was like opening a door, that you were able to to yeah. finally then have that contact with Lizzie. And then uh, leading on to the, to, to the single, the, the song. I had a session with Suzanne and... Um, uh, she picked up Lizzie, of course, and she was saying, oh, I've, I've got your wife here. And she says, you, you've written a song for her. And uh, Was that said, the oh, song? Was that the song that you just released? She said, oh, I want, I want to hear it, you know. So I sent her the song, and it was just a rough, it was just a rough demo of just me singing with the guitar. And she wrote back immediately and said, oh, oh you've really got it there, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And um, I'd just done it locally with a friend of mine here in the village. And um, so I, I thought, well, it, it wasn't some sort of arrangement. So I sent it off to someone called Hugh Syme, who I'd worked with already on, on another solo album um, a couple of years ago, who was Canadian, who were living in America. And he wrote back and said, oh, I love this song. You know, it's got it, it's lovely. Um, it's got a lovely sort of tragic beauty to it. Uh -huh. um, then I didn't hear for like, must be about 18 months. <laughs> I didn't hear from him. I thought, oh, he, he, he's not interested. And then all of a sudden I got this wonderful arrangement back. He said, oh, I've done this arrangement finally. And uh, I thought, well, this is it. This is lovely. Uh, and I had Terry Brown... Um, mix it terry uh, who used to work with brush who you know who's a famous toronto well he's english he's living in toronto famous producer and um i got it back and then demon decided to release it which i'm, I'm very pleased about She comes on the breath of the wind She's sending me a deeper sound Riding along on the butterfly wing She's telling me she's still around can perceive the more she's there the more she shares now i really do believe she's free of care she's everywhere
your 2018 album was re-released in 2023. Did you not have the song back in time to put that on there as a bonus track? Or did you know all along you wanted to just put it out as a single song? Well, I no, I, I asked them. I remember I had it, I got it back just before they released it, but they were already in the process. You know, they've already, it was too late to put it back on. Uh, and um, they were, they're, they're very sweet at DM and they're very nice, uh, nice guys. And uh, he said to me, um, oh, oh well, we, we can't get it on the album, but we could release it as a standalone single. So I said, okay, <laughs> let's yeah. do that. Walking in the Wild Land, that song could easily fit on that album. There, there's a, there's a tone to the songs on that album. Now you wrote those songs before Lindsay got sick, and yeah. and I think didn't it come out? I know it came out in 2018. Was it before she got sick that it actually came out? Yes, it came out just before she had the diagnosis. Wow, so weird, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, do you ever go back and listen to those songs that you wrote before she got sick and hear them in a new light? You know, the album has just come out again in 2023. A lot happened to you since 2018. And and I want to pick up on a, a few songs and, and talk about some of them because I listen to it differently now. And, you know, I it's like things that I wrote before my husband died. They mean something different to me now when I go back and look at yeah. it. So I like the title track, Walking in the Wild Land. Walking in the wild land, free of all pretenses. The sights and sounds filling up my senses. I thought the time we're not aware of what's going. It's all about communing with nature and hear some of the lyrics. I'm ready for a new communion. My mind is clear and so is my motivation. And when I'm here, there's always inspiration. And in the breeze, there sings a single melody that is gorgeous. It's just so tranquil and beautiful. And it it, it seems like it's coming from somebody who's in a very serene place. I mean, yeah. literally where you were living and in your mind as well. Yeah. Does it feel different now? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that one feels different. I, I listened to the uh, Changing Times. I was going to bring that up too. Standing here on the bridge to Changing Times Sometime soon I will cross to changing times every day. Yeah, that's quite different. I think to myself, oh, wow, this was sort of quite a, a prophetic song, you know. The that's, way exactly, that's exactly what I wrote <laughs> in my notes, how prophetic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. You, you say, standing here on the bridge of changing times, sometime soon I will cross to changing times. I mean, were you thinking of your own mortality then? Because you couldn't have been thinking of Lizzie's at that point. No, I, I guess so. Yeah, I guess I was thinking of myself. But mm. when you, um, I can't really remember. But I know, um, I guess I, I foresaw that something was going to happen. Because I was about 20 years older than Lizzie. And we always thought I was going to go before her. And she was always so concerned. Oh, what, what am I going to do, you know? And then it was the other way around, which is so weird. I want to mention a couple of other songs on that album. Soft in a Hard Place is another one. I think the lyrics read differently now. And here's a sampling. 
You're soft in a hard place of that, I am sure. I wonder what happened here before. But you will move along in the end and time. Time will be your best friend. Be your best friend. That one, that one's tough. I mean, that was given what happened. And I mean, there's more. You're soft in a hard place. Believe that is true. You stay till you do what you got to do, but you will move along in the end. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you got it. I, I, I hadn't seen that one before. I hadn't thought of that. But you're quite right. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, it almost yeah. makes you wonder if, if you, like you alluded to earlier, if, if maybe subconsciously you knew something was coming. Yes. Yes. Because the, in a way, there's no there's no time you know there's no real time there's not that th- there's no past no future we're all in the same time together you know yeah especially in that sort of state when you're creating and making up a song but uh i hadn't looked at that one it's interesting isn't it there's one more from that album charmed and I'll, I'll end that discussion of that album with that and by the way i love the piano and that very high horn on that song it just sounds great. Charmed, charmed every day. Charmed, charmed in every way. I'm charmed, charmed with someone there looking after me. You say in there, I'm charmed, charmed every day, charmed, charmed in every way. I'm charmed, charmed. There's someone there looking after me. Those lyrics, of course, are, again, were written before Lizzie's diagnosis. And do you still feel charmed? Well, yeah, I do actually. I, I, I feel even more charmed. Actually. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I know. It, I know it's a terrible shock, and I've taken, you know, I've, I've taken all the pain of it. Yeah. I've I've come out of it, or I'm coming out of it now, and and feeling oh well, I'm considering I've been through that. You know, I, I'm still going, and I'm still relatively happy, and so I think I am charmed, and, and that there is somebody. You know, I know Liz is looking after me now. Yeah. Well, it helps that you're a creative, so you get to funnel all these feelings and and all of the all of the grief, all of the emotion that goes along with losing someone that you love so much into your art there's an outlet for you that a lot of people don't have that's got to have helped yes and of course writing the book was great for me a a real um letting go for me writing that that book let's go back and talk more about the book lizzie actually gave you the idea Yes. And it was after she was gone that she gave you the idea. How did that happen? I think that was through another medium. Um, she came to the to another medium and said, well, "Why don't you uh, Why don't you write a blog about all these things that have happened?" And um, and then she said, "Well, maybe you know, maybe it doesn't have to be a blog. It can be a book." And and that just turned out because I I thought a bit more about it and I thought. Oh, I wonder if Dave would be interested because we we did the other book. Nobody told me, and and it was very successful, you know. And uh, we were great together, and I, I love Dave. He's, he's great to work with. And um, all of a sudden, I, I I got an email out of the blue from him. He just said, "Oh, you know, how how's it? How are you doing?" And I, I didn't believe it, and I I so I rang him up and I said, "Oh, I've got an idea to do another book," you know. But you're probably not going to want to do this. It's you know, it's about the paranormal. He said, oh, "I love it. I love the paranormal." <laughs> so we got on with it, really, uh, like a house on fire. Are you finding that the more you talk about this and and the more you write about it, do you find that there are more people than you thought who were interested in this? Yes. Yeah. 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 I I, I do. You know, I do quite a few interviews. I mean, I must say, you're a very good interviewer. I oh, must thank say. you. We have a sort of a connection somehow. I, I absolutely feel that too. I was so looking forward to this. 
but you, you ask me all the right things, you know. But I have a lot, like you did, you know. You say, oh, "Well, oh, I lost a relative," and um, yeah, I, I went through the same as you, and, and um, I, I'm very interested in what you got to say. And this has happened a lot. Yeah, yeah. What do you say to people who haven't had the opportunity to connect with their loved one once they've left? Who've said, I, I don't understand. I'm not receiving any signs. What am I doing wrong? Yes, I can't really speak for I I don't really know the whole story. That's the thing. <laughs> I only know a little bit of it, but um I would say you just need to be patient and uh uh you you just need to notice. You go you go into another way of uh, of thinking. And notice things, and notice little birds coming to the window, and thinking, oh, "This never happened to me before." And little butterflies coming and flying in the room, and all this sort of thing. There's things that happen, and you need to be open to it. Did Just you some... actually experience butterflies coming in the room after Lizzie passed? Yes, I had all that, and, and uh, you know, a, a bird banging on the on the window trying to get in. Wow, <laughs> and then a little lo lots of little birds coming and staying the night on the terrace, and all sorts of funny things that never happened before. Talking to you makes me rethink a lot of my own experiences because I was one of those people who always said, "Well, I've never had an experience where I felt like my mother or my husband was contacting me. I've never felt like I've picked up on any signs." And now I wonder if I just wasn't paying close enough attention. And and actually, Jim, not long after we talked, I went to California and I had an experience that was very strange. I was in David Oman's house and he he lives on Cielo Drive, just a few doors down from where Sharon Tate was murdered. And I was interviewing him in person and he took me down to his basement and he he even wrote a book about this. His house is supposedly haunted. And he says he has experiences all the time. In fact, he has cameras set up all around the house so that he can try to catch on video any any strange things that happen. So we're talking, I'm recording him with my phone. The light started to flicker oh. and the temperature <laughs> changed and my phone oh, stopped right. working. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I thought of you. <laughs> Thank you. I did. I thought, <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, well, there we are. There's, there's these things that we know. We know very little of what goes on in the bigger picture. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, going back to the first, I guess, reading that you had with Suzanne Giesman, she, didn't she make contact with your mom and dad? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she well remembered. <laughs> she contacted. I'd, I'd never... You know, I didn't really want to contact them, to be honest. Uh, uh, but I mean, of course, it was it was very nice. It was lovely, and she contacted them first. Mm. And she said, "You know, I've got your mum and dad here," and and of course, I didn't have a very uh, very nice childhood. And uh, they were they were saying to me, oh, "We're really sorry, you know, the, what you had to live through." And, Please forgive us. We were we're very sorry, and we 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 always loved you, you know. But but they were apologizing. <laughs> so it's very sweet. That's amazing because Suzanne had no idea about the relationship that you had with them, did she? No, no, she didn't. No, no. And then she said, "Oh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, um, uh, bombs go off. I'm hearing bomb, you know." And I said, "Well, that that's all right. I was I was born in the war, you know. The, uh, England was bombed, and she could hear, you know, she could hear them going off. <laughs> and, and and there was a place down the road, a pub that just got, got you know, blasted, just got flattened by a bomb. And we, so we were quite close to being bombed." some other interactions that you have? you've not seen her you've not actually seen her physical well, I, haven't, I haven't seen i've dreamt about her a couple of times but not really you know not really big time i haven't seen her in the mirror or anything like that <laughs> um but she's been very present and um 
yeah, there was one thing I was just talk, I was talking to her, and um, she said, "Oh, you're, you're when, when you finish talking, you'll, you'll see. Go and watch the TV. There's a football on. There's a message." And um, I thought football. She never liked football, you know. So <laughs> I switched the TV on, and it was Liverpool playing, and the, and and of course their their song is "You'll Never Walk Alone." How do you keep her close now? I mean, do you, how do you keep her presence near and your relationship as vital as it, it comes across a, as being very vital still? Yeah, how do, how do I do it? I have to have discipline. So I, I sit down every day around the same time in the morning and I do a sort of meditation. And sometimes I do um, Suzanne's method, like I said. Um, and I, I just talk to her and I, I pick up a pen and I write in a book. So I've got a whole book full of messages, you know, and she's telling me, you know, telling me what to do or giving me information or telling me. Sometimes she she, she told me about Charlie Watts. Did I tell you that before? I don't think so. It was quite a few months before I even knew he was ill. And, no, uh, you didn't tell me about that. I thought, Charlie, what? Why is she telling me Charlie was? And then a few months later, he died. So she must have t be telling me he was going to pass, you know. Oh. Have you gotten yeah. a sense from Lizzie that, I mean, I any little tap on the shoulder, hey, Jim, I love she walks in beauty. Well done. <laughs> yes, I've had all that. Yes, I've really? That. <laughs> yes, I've had that. I've had a lot of that. Yeah, it's a very, you know, um, she's usually very positive. It's very unusual she would say something like, oh, you know, that's rubbish. Or <laughs> <laughs> She's always very complimentary and uh, reassuring and very positive about things and about life. But that was her nature anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, even, even though she struggled physically, she was always a very positive, very sort of happy she was like a happy person. Mm -hmm. She struggled. I mean, she was very sensitive and she didn't always like um, mixing with a lot of people. She liked to keep keep herself to herself. Yeah. But uh, very sensitive, but always very, uh, very bright, very bright and smiley, you know. Mm -hmm. Back to the song, which again, I just, I think, Breath of the Wind is hauntingly beautiful. And that that word immediately came to mind as I was listening, haunting. And it's just so poignant. I'm going to read some of the lyrics to that as well. And you mentioned butterflies earlier. That made it into some of the lyrics. Here she comes on the breath of the wind. She's sending me a different sound, riding along on the butterfly wing. She's telling me she's still around. The more I really can perceive, the more she's there, the more she shares. And now I really do believe she's free of care. She's everywhere. Here she comes on the breath of the wind. She's calling me to make a leap, riding along on the butterfly wing. I need to wake up from my sleep. That's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it's such a companion piece to the book. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it sounds lovely. So nice being read. <laughs> Well, that last stanza really gets me. Um, she's calling me to make a leap. What does that suggest? Because it, it sounds like a call to action. What are you leaping towards? She's calling me to to write, raise my level, to to go, up, you know, to to get everything going on around, and to to raise my consciousness, to, so I could tune in. But you've done that. You had, yeah. and this this started. A couple of records back, your lyrics got more philosophical, more spiritual, and they yeah. just continue to be that. I guess it just reflects this this interest in, that you have in Buddhism and spirituality. Do you have any advice for 
anybody struggling with grief, anybody, because I, I gather that you've come away from all of this experience having a whole different view of death, that concept of death, yeah. uh, the uh, the possibility of an afterlife. What do you? What can you say to somebody who's really struggling with loss right now? Uh, well, I th- I would I would say that their their loved one is still there. Their loved one hasn't died. There's, there's no such thing. So that the consciousness lives on, and uh, their their loved ones are still going, and um, they're they're watching over them. If, if there's if there's real genuine love between them. They're watching them. They're they're caring for them. And even if it's not, you know, they're they're learning very rapidly on the other side to to you know to raise their consciousness and to 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 be more loving. So if, I think if you've had a bad experience with someone, they they want they want to heal that. They come back and try and heal that with you. So it, I think it's very positive. And um, and death, you know. The other side of that, beyond the veil, is not something horrible. It's not some sort of horrible hell realm. It, it's actually quite quite a beautiful place, you know. And and people are all ascending gradually in in the way of things. That's all I know. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing, of course. <laughs> well, I can tell you, it's been very comforting for me to get to know you a little bit and talk about these things with you. It makes me rethink some of my losses and the possibility that maybe they aren't so far away. And that's a comfort. So thank you for that. Oh, good. Great, great. Thank you. What's next for you? More music, another book. How about a novel this time? (laughs) I should do a novel, shouldn't I? Yeah. We'll see. Something completely different, perhaps, like the Monty Python. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I'd like to carry on doing it. Maybe do some more songs like this and maybe, a, you know, another album of that sort of stuff. Yes, it would be wonderful. And by the way, happy belated birthday. You just celebrated your 80th in July. Yeah, that's nice. I've had a nice time. What did? How did you celebrate? Well, I had I had some friends uh, come down and stay with me, and I had a a nice party. Somebody threw a party for me, and um, I had some uh, some nice people turn. I had the uh, the bass player for you too. He turned really. Up. Adam, Adam came, and uh, JJ from the Stranglers. They were there, so uh, yeah, there were sort of rock and roll people. All oh, right. Well, that sounds like it was quite a shindig. Yes, it was a nice one. Very good. Jim, this has been such a treat to get to talk to you again. Thank you so much. That's lovely, Christy. You can find Jim's new song, Breath of the Wind, pretty much wherever you download music. I'll put links in the show notes. Keep up with Jim at his website, jamesmccarty.com, where you can find all of his social media links as well. And definitely check out Jim's wonderful books, Nobody Told Me, My Life with the Yardbirds, Renaissance, and Other Stories, and She Walks in Beauty, My Quest for the Bigger Picture, both written with Dave Thompson. Check the show notes for this episode's playlist, which includes Breath of the Wind, as well as some of Jim's songs from his album, Walking in the Wildland. Thanks for listening, everybody.